This is the Stark Truth, hosted by Robert Stark. Brought to you by StarkTruthRadio.com. Robert Stark is an American journalist and political commentator. You can listen to his podcast at www.StarkTruthRadio.com. Uh, Robert Stark here. We have a very exciting show. I am joined here with uh, Jeffrey uh, Giuliano. He's an actor and author, uh, singer, songwriter, and designer uh, based in Thailand. And he's uh, best known for uh, playing VIP4 in Squid Games, which is uh, obviously has become a, become a global phenomenon. Jeffrey Giuliano, it is so great uh, finally speaking with you. Thank you. I, I, it's lucky I opened my eyes because I was sound asleep with the time difference. So yeah, it, God, God put this together. Yeah, this is very exciting. And uh, talking about your character, because you were featured uh, in one one episode playing one of the VIPs. And uh, for people who have seen that uh, scene, like you have become, your character has sort of become iconic. But I think one thing to kind of address is the style it's obviously the director was very influenced by Stanley Kubrick, but it is cartoonish, stylized, over the top, kind of the comparisons to Bo- even Boss Hogg from Dukes as Hazards as well. Obviously a big fan of Kubrick, but uh, what do you think about all these people? They're saying that bad actors, are they missing, they're misinterpreting the characters, or they don't get that? Okay. The other VIPs I cannot speak for. I met them on set. I, I don't know them. They're what's called local hire. They're nice guys. God bless them. They got 400 bucks a day. I was flown in from Hollywood. Anyone can see I have a much bigger part. Um, and w- which is, you know, we serve at the pleasure of the director. He went through all the actors in Korea, couldn't find anyone he, he liked. Uh, looked around, I think, in Thailand and, uh, you know, other places in Southeast Asia, Japan. Couldn't find anybody in. <clears throat> flew me in. I got significantly more than four hundred dollars a day. I can assure you. So um, I, I cannot speak about the other guys. I just can't say anything about them. My performance was absolutely fine. I am um, a naturalistic actor. You can look. I got three movies on Netflix now, and there's one particular. If anyone's interested, uh, you know, to compare my acting styles or whatever, you can look at a, a film called Peninsula Train to Busan in which I play a, a, a hoodlum, which is generally what I do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, uh, Boss Hog is a good comparison. Stanley Kubrick, Clockwork Orange is good. But also, I would say anything done by the Coen brothers, you know, Fargo and all these things. I mean, is, does William H., is William H., Macy, a bad actor, because, oh, gosh, geez, what you guys up to, you know? I, I, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong here, you know? I mean, uh, come on, it, it's a stylized performance. Um, that's what he wanted. Now, we were given, I was given no latitude to change the script or anything like that. I had mentioned, you know, well, you know, diplomatically, of course, because Netflix is my employer, has been my employer for my last three films, so I was walking on eggshells about the 69 jokes and I was told no you have to say those 69 jokes so okay well you know I'm a writer maybe I could punch it up a little no 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 you just do it exactly as we we have it there that'll be fine thank you Mr. Julian so that was all from the script you weren't allowed to ad-lib well no I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you so then after they told me no when they turned on the camera, I started to ad lib to try to get around it, do an end run around what I felt a little, you know, awkward about. And when you're on a big set like that, you don't see anybody, but there's a voice of God that says, Mr. Giuliano, please stick to the script. So that I tried twice, you know, in a very diplomatic way to, you know, just maybe go in a slightly different direction, put a little bit of a different tone to it and no they didn't want that so I, I had to do what what you know when I was you know if, if you're paid to make shoes and you start making baseballs you get fired you know so I had to I had to do what they said and look it's 
I have wa- it's so stupid. I've watched that thing with a jaundiced eye. Well, maybe I, you know, there was something wrong. There's nothing wrong. In fact, it's very good. So I just and and you know the mail that I get, which is a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot, crazy amount. I have to turn off the phone at night because it pings all night. I just turned it off right now. Um, is uh, is kind of more that? Hey, what are they talking about? I love it. It's fantastic. So say the fans. And and uh, so I just think that's nonsense and a tempest and a teacup. It it's also there's several factors. I don't want to go too much into this, but. One, it was a Korean show produced by Koreans in Korea in the Korean language uh, for Koreans. Uh, and, 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 and Americans were just a kind of, it, it, much in the same way I've been told as Asians are uh, um, depicted in American films. You know, it's a sort of an afterthought, an ancillary character. Um, and they're, you know, not Asians are Asians portrayed properly. Was uh, Bruce Lee uh, portrayed properly in um the uh, last Tarantino film about the, the Manson murders. Um, you know, I mean, that's kind of, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to just put in a, in a nutshell because it's a big subject, you know, is it, was there racism? Was there, uh, uh, was there resentment? I mean, I, I know that there's feelings in, in Korea uh, about the Americans occupation there during the Korean war. Um, still, um, so, you know, without getting myself into trouble, um, it was a wonderful experience. We serve at the, uh, at the pleasure of the director, and the performance was fine. Uh, what, was, what was that like, the final scene with your character? <laughs> was, there, was, there a sense of, was there a sense of awkwardness, or was it just like you were just, you were, it was just acting? What, what do you think? Look, uh, normally speaking, in those situations, they have the crew. Well, first of all, they close off the set, which they didn't hear. They didn't close this. Have a closed set, and there was all these kind of like three hundred people there. I mean, inches away from me, there was people all around me. And for some reason, unlike the normally, what happens is you got these sort of thirty-year-old guys, you know, with a stubble and a headband and something in their ear. But this day, all the production staff were beautiful young girls. I didn't understand that. So I had to take off all my clothes, everything, to be completely nude in front of all those young girls and stuff. And it was, it was very embarrassing. However, when you're in drama school, which I was for many years, I got a master's degree, um, the, the teacher, I remember he said once, if, if you're about to go on stage to do your big performance and you get a phone call that your family's been wiped out, hit by a train, uh, you have you don't run out you do the show the show must go on but you use that negative energy you use that nervousness that un, being uncomfortable and so forth which I did I know how to do that so um, it was ostensibly and to anyone else who was maybe not a professional actor it would have been like unbearable I'm not doing that uh, but for me it was a little bit awkward but I transmuted that energy and used it successfully and in, in, in portraying the character yeah, the well, Squid Games. There's obviously a lot of a lot of social commentary in this. What do you think about discussions of social commentary of the VIPs? Do you see them as villains or more just the interpretation that they're so far removed from humanity? Like, how much of a do you think there should be that much social commentary in into those characters? Well, they were designed. I was designed to be Donald Trump. But I didn't know that until afterwards. The director did not tell me this, but he told the media about a week ago that that was his intention. So he wanted a boorish, piggish, thuggish, stupid, uh, overbearing, loudmouthed guy, and that's exactly what you got. Um, you know, there's another thing with, look, this is, a, as my wife says, this is a film for teenagers, more or less, um, and, you know, or young people, certainly. And they might not be as experienced with divorcing the character from the actor. I give the example if I play a, a murderer, which I have in many movies, when I go back to the dressing room, the homicide division is not there to, to take me into custody because I'm an actor. I'm doing a part. I'm playing a role. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, all right, in, re- in reference to the social commentary, Yes, it's an allegory for the gross materialism of this world wherein people are willing to die and 
kill uh, and everything in between to get ahead financially and it, it shows actually it's 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 an allegory to show that the pitfalls of that that materialism isn't where I mean the guy didn't even take the money you know because at the end at the end of the day there's so much more in life that comes before money um, you know I go to India I'm a meditator I've been going since uh, about 30 years over 30 years and I see so many people that have I suppose they'd be considered homeless in America. They live in grass huts or by the road or in a, a thatched cottage. And they have nothing materially, but they're so happy and they're so sweet. So this is the disease of the West and the modern world to think that money is the be all and the end all. You know, if that were the case, how, yeah, I remember when I was young, I'd see like uh, Elizabeth Taylor's son dies of a drug overdose and this kind of thing. There's so many things we can point to, so many specifics wherein people with so much money are just not happy and uh, they're into drugs or whatever it is. It's just, uh, Bob Dylan said, when you reach the top, you find out you're on, on the bottom rung. So it's pretty obvious materialism is not it. I know that. I was happy to see that reflected in Squid Game. Is that part of the reason why you decided to leave America? You've been traveling over the world to <laughs> Thailand and to, and you were in India recently too. Yeah, well, I I can't stand Donald Trump. I, I'm a, a you know I'm at risk of uh, alienating some of your audience. I am a I guess what they call a Hollywood elite. I'm a liberal, vegan, uh, progressive, socialist, progressive Democrat. When I was younger, I personally knew the Kennedy family down in Hyannisport, and so I'm very much from that that time. Um, I think the government is there to facilitate the, 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 the needs of the people and not to line their own pockets. So, you know, I, I just, you know, they, there used to be a sign when I was a kid, if you don't like America, get out. And, well, it's, it's not that I don't like America. I love the country. I love the people. But I find the politics insufferable. As, and we, you know, January 6, all that. So, you know, it just, I haven't felt comfortable in the United States, so I've I've left, and you know I've had a very wonderful life. Um, I, sometimes I try to imagine a, a scenario in which I would go back and could be happy there, and I I just haven't been able to do it in the last twenty years. Uh, you uh, played Ronald McDonald and ah. the Burger King mascot as a vegetarian ah. back in the eighties, and there was ah. this uh, this sense of conflict with your own personal your own personal uh, ethics and then you also made a movie fast food fascist fascist, fascist food, food with uh, yeah. PETA if you want to if you want to plug that yeah well well I, I'm happy to talk about my my view on uh, stewardship of, of animals uh, you know we have stewardship and care of our children uh, just like we do the animals but we don't kill and eat our children so I think you know as Albert Einstein said uh, not to get too philosophical, we we would do well to try to widen our circle of compassion to embrace all life in as much as we can um, uh, it, while we're here in this temporary world. We're carbon-based life forms, for God's sakes. We, we, we've got all built all this drama about who we are and identifying with our material body and our particular circumstances of our lives, but that's just for a minute. And there is something from which we came and something from which we return. And that, to me, is far more, it's a bigger part of my life. It, you know, maybe this material life that we're living is a tip of the iceberg. And we all know, as the Titanic sadly found out, uh, that the bigger part was underneath the water, just unseen, out of our view. But there, nonetheless, <laughs> if, you know, ask the Titanic again. So, um yeah, I was Ronald McDonald. I, I got out of drama school. I graduated with a, a master's degree in Shakespearean drama, of all things, and a totally useless degree, right, on any financial level. And I saw an audition for The Marvelous Magical Burger King, and they gave me a little song. I'm the marvelous magical Burger King. Hey, I can do most anything. I like a magic and food that's fun. We got fun, fun, fun forever. We won at Burger King. So I did that, and I got, wow, I got the job. They sent me to Hollywood. They trained me as a magician. And I did that for a couple of years, and then I, I, I had heard it through the grapevine that 
to be Ronald McDonald's a much better gig. They pay way much. So I called up and I didn't tell them I was Burger King for their, from their competitor because they're very, you know, they're very conscious about these sort of things. So um, indeed, I, I got that role as well. And all, the, all that time I was a meditating vegan, even way back. I've been a vegetarian since I was 15. Um, I'm over 60 now. So long, long time. I didn't say that to them, but you know, they were, I didn't, you know, again, they, I didn't, I, it was difficult for me to relate with the, the uh, people running McDonald's. Uh, so I did Ronald McDonald for a couple of years. And then somehow or other, they found out I was a vegetarian. They thought that the, the headlines, of course, would then become Ronald McDonald's vegetarian. So um, they wanted me to leave. I sued them for wrongful dismissal and I won. But, you know, those are the particular circumstances of my uh, story. But beyond that, I am very, very interested in, without being a jerk about it, you know, I don't pull food out of people's hands. But for me, myself, what I can do to make my little bank and shoal of life here uh, better and cleaner and, and more positive is, is not to be involved in unnecessary violence to anything, animals, people, my family, myself, you know, I just try to be cool in that sense. Uh, you also have, uh, you have a uh, new podcast on your website, and then looking at your IMDB, you have upcoming, you're up, you were in, uh, you mentioned another Netflix series, but you have a reality, I see a reality TV show, The Last Tango in Thailand, and then I also yeah. see Monks and... Mama, Mama Sons, Mama Sons Mama which is Mama completed, Sons, yeah. and you play Frank, mm -hmm. Frank the Farong, which means uh, the Thai word for foreigner. Yeah, yeah. So I've been I played those roles uh, a lot, the sort of drunken uh, sex pat guy, which doesn't mean I am that. As a matter of fact, I don't I don't I don't drink, take drugs, and I'm happily married. So that's all nonsense. Why do I point that out? Because I get weird things on the internet. Like, oh, you live in Thailand, you must be a pedophile. They don't say that. Like, they said it a couple times. Um, or you, you, you're you definitely a sex pet. So, no, man, I just live in Thailand because I live in Thailand. It doesn't mean anything particular, you know. Um, so if I live in Sicily, which is where my family's from, originally, does that mean I'm a hitman? I'm a mafioso? No, it doesn't mean that. I mean, there's somebody there like that. But anyway, um, yeah, I have a lot of projects in the go. We're just launching the Jeffrey Giuliano's dogfight which will be sort of a Howard Stern that isn't stupid. You know, I've even got a Robin. I've even got a co-host, a, a, a Thai gentleman called Matt K that I've been working with for a long time. And we'll co-host this. And it'll be a sort of in, more intelligent Howard Stern um, and a way more intelligent Joe Rogan. So, yeah, I'm, you know, like I'm like a cop in America. I'm looking for trouble. You know, you go down the road and you, they come out from behind the billboard looking for trouble I'm looking for trouble too and uh, the things that I, I see that I, I'm positive or very very sure are wrong or that can be corrected or that you know wrongs that could be righted you know I'm a bit of a crusader in that sense and uh, the, the the idea of Jeffrey Giuliano's dogfight we're just shopping for equipment now um, I refuse to do it unless it's world-class in terms of production and all that stuff so uh, it, it I, I'm I feel that that may work. Yeah, I have a few movies lined up, and they're not on Internet Movie Database. There's confidentiality agreements with all of, uh, of these films. So I have a couple of really big films. I'm doing well, uh, and, uh, it, and if, if, if it were not for Squid Game, it, it wouldn't be so uh, such a good time. So, you know, I did fine. I made 28 movies before Squid Game, uh, but Squid Game's a whole new thing. You know, I get the strangest mail from people. Uh, oh, what is, uh, <laughs> what's the weirdest message that you've gotten? Is it more for, well, yeah, from the fans? Yeah, se sexual things, pictures, and, you know, I'll finish the job, that you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. Um, one girl... Oh, uh, so they actually, don't even, they don't even make the distinction between, uh, between acting no. and reality? No, They're man, probably just not kids. at all. Not at all. I had one last night. See, you know, I have this thing where I like, I, it's, <laughs> it's really good for me if people go to my internet movie database, you know, which is under my name and click around because it takes my score. I've got a really good score now of 1,400. If you're not in the business, full 1,400, what's that? No, you can be in a million or, you know, half a million to be in the, I'm, to be 1,400 is what means that Hollywood looks at that and that's, 
the first thing that they would see if you have a good rating, oh, he's only 1,400, well, give him the job or bring him in or whatever. So I had, you know, asked this girl, girl I'm actually, I'm not sure the, the gender, you know, you got to be careful these days, but I'd asked this person, you know, hey, would you, would you go to my internet movie database? I sent a link and I got all these pictures back. So, yeah, and I had a girl, uh, she tattooed, this was a girl, she tattooed a little sweetie. She said, can I have your autograph? And so I sent it. And then three or four days later, she had that autograph tattooed quite large on, on her arm, on her forearm. And I just said, oh, dear, what's this girl going to do in the future with this thing? I'm sure she'll have to spend lots of money to get it off of the laser. So, yes, people are not making a distinction between I mean I, I play the most odious person in in squid game but they're just confusing at okay I'll tell you another thing I shouldn't I've had three death threats as well oh, somebody's wow. gonna cut, somebody's gonna cut me up in little pieces and throw me in the bay uh, somebody told me I should uh, cobain myself and I can't remember what the other one is so yeah I'm not supposed to talk about that but yes um, it's been a strange experience very wonderful I have a fan club you know I made those 28 movies I never saw my name in print I was certainly good enough that in the in the uh, industry there was oh get Giuliano and then okay I do another one and then, so one movie was perpetuated another movie but there was no reaction from the media and no reaction I never heard from a fan in 15 years and now it's constant you know um, and I'm happy to do it. You know, one of the things, like if they write me, I write, and I, if anyone writes me on Instagram or uh, I'd come to TikTok or the Jeffrey Giuliano channel on Netflix, I will get back to you. You know, I I remember when I was a kid and I would, uh, I met some, I used to hang around the TV station in Tampa, Florida, and they'd call me up and say, oh, we got somebody coming in here from the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, bring your autograph book, Jeff, come on down. And it was so important to me and so I and I can see that I can see that when people write me on Facebook or whatever and I write them back one girl had her birthday and I made her a little video and it was just you know they were in she was in tears that girl so you know for young people these things are important to them God bless them um, uh, yeah I don't I don't ignore any you know, maybe after years and years of it or something if I was Brad Pitt you know there's a can't do it or maybe but I don't know I don't have a problem I sit down and I do fan stuff about um, an hour a day and also I've been booked on some personal appearances at various comic cons because I will tell you no one from Squid Game is ever going to appear at any comic con or anything like that never why because they don't speak English they live in Korea and they're all millionaires I'm none of those things um, and then the other two VIPs who were, you know, they were featured extras, which means an extra with a couple of lines, they've moved on. So if you want Squid Game to come to your town, if you want an autograph or a selfie, you have to come to me, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, Jeffrey Giuliano, great speaking with you. And before we wrap up, uh, do you want to plug your website and uh, or any well, other project that you want to promote? Surely. I invite everybody to join me on Instagram. Um, and TikTok at Instagram it's Jeffrey Actor G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y-A-C-T-O-R and then on, uh, on uh, TikTok it's Squid Game Confidential and then of course my name on Facebook I can't accept any friends there but I can talk to you um, and the Jeffrey Giuliano channel is, is important to me and that's where we're going to be launching the Dogfight podcast and, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm happy to talk to people, especially young people. Oh, there, there's one thing I'd like to say, which has really c c come out of this, which is very interesting, is that I, I have been informed that young people who had not come out of the closet in the old, to use the old parlance uh, or had not discussed their uh, sexual identity or preference with their families, I've been watching this show with them, and many of that has precipitated uh, conversations about uh, this in their lives and it's done some good to people they've gotten it back to me like thank you so much for you know as if I had anything to do with it you know I was told to play a gay guy <clears throat> that's what I did 
of course, is not a really good role model for gay guys as he's crazy and evil. But still, it, it just somehow it brought up the subject at home and young people are saying thank you to me. It gave an opportunity for them to discuss this with their families. So I, I, that's all of this is left field. There's nothing that's happening to me that isn't out of left field. Um, so, yeah, it's it's. It, what a great privilege to, to, to do these shows, Peninsula. And I'm in, oh, I'm in a film called Kate with uh, Woody Harrelson that's on there now. So, yeah, it's it's terrific. And, you know, it says something about really working and, and sticking to it. That's the other thing people ask me is how can I be an actor, a successful actor? I said, dude, you know, I went to bed about, I, just, I, I know you want to close, but I went to bed about mm, six weeks ago and I, my, I looked at my son sleeping in his bed and I looked at my wife sound asleep, picked up her little foot put it under the covers, and I just stood there in the room and thought, well, Jeff, you worked really hard. You've been working since the 70s. You know, 71, you started in drama school, and you did everything you were supposed to do, and, you, dude, you just didn't make it. It didn't happen for you, and then it happened. So that's exactly, Morgan Freeman tells the same kind of story. Um, if anyone out there, any young people want to be an actor, um, you just you have to really want it and stick to it. And, I mean, I, you know, I'm almost one foot on a uh, banana peel, the other foot in, in, in the grave. Um, you know, I'm so old, but, you know, it happened for me, and, you know, you just follow your dreams, and it, it generally works out. Uh, Jeffrey Giuliano, uh, great show. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Don't forget to send me the URL, my brother.